Hello, everyone. The Root of David I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Revelation 22.16 Sometimes, in Trinity world, some Trinitarians will claim that Jesus is saying that he created David, and for that reason God is the root of David. And the point in this is that Jesus is God. He's the root of David. In other words, like the origin of David, because he created David, or some weird thing like that. Why is Jesus saying this? What are the significance of his words here? Or is he just spouting off some random theological ideas? In Scripture, the fact that Jesus is the seed of David is enormously important because, by definition, the promised Messiah is the promised son of David, the seed of David. And first century Israelites were waiting for this promise, son of David or seed of David, because of a very significant promise God had made to David, the king of Israel. So these words of Jesus here are indicative that he's a fulfillment of God's promise to David. He's a son of David. Quite often when Trinitarians make this claim, they won't quote Revelation 5.5. 5. Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome. The house of David belonged to the tribe of Judah. Here's another important verse to look at concerning this matter. The root of David, son of Jesse. David was the son of Jesse. A shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, the nations. Isaiah 11, 1 and 10. So what does the root of Jesse mean here? Does it mean Jesse is one person and his root is someone else? Someone else originated Jesse? Is that what it means? Or does it mean Jesse is himself the root of someone else? Well, if you read what it's saying here, it's obviously the latter. The root of Jesse isn't, you know, someone else who is Jesse's root. Jesse is the root of someone else. And again at Romans 15, 12, and again Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the nations will hope. It's talking about a descendant of Jesse. And Jesse is the root, the ancestral genealogical root of this person. This does not mean Jesse has a root who is someone else. It means Jesse is the root of someone else. It means Jesse is the forefather, the ancestral root of this person. The root of David is the same idea. It doesn't mean David has a root who is someone else, but that David is the root of someone else, namely his descendant. Jesus. God had made a major promise to King David, who was the son of Jesse, concerning David's descendants. Isaiah the prophet is alluding to this promise, the seed of David. The promised Messiah is the son or seed of David, the son of Jesse, because David is the son of Jesse. 
This language is about genealogical ancestry, genealogical roots. We even use that language today. To insist that the root of David means David originated Jesus, or with Jesus, or by Jesus, i.e. God the Son, would be to also say Jesus is not only David's son, but also that Jesus is David's father, his ancestral father. Is Jesus David's ancestral father? Because that's what this language is about. And that would be simply absurd. And that's why this Trinitarian claim is so absurd. Just as this language here in Isaiah and Romans 15 means that Jesse is the root or ancestral forefather of someone else, this language in these verses likewise means that David is the root or ancestral forefather of someone else, the forefather of Jesus. Jesus is the root of David, and so was King Solomon, and so was King Hezekiah, and so on. And here's a couple more important verses from Jeremiah. I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch of David to spring forth. Jeremiah 33. The problem here basically is how some English speaking people are confused because of a genitive Greek case. And a, a funny little thing can kind of happen when you translate from Greek into English. Translations of a Greek genitive sometimes create this confusion. And it's because of the way they use genitives in Greek. And we don't tend to do quite the same thing in English. For example, at Ephesians 1.17, God is called the Father of the Glory. Well, does that language mean the Father is sourced in something else called the glory? Or, or does it mean the Father is the source of the glory? You see how you can look at that kind of two different ways? And that's where this confusion comes from. We still use this kind of language today when we refer to our ancestral roots. And we usually use plural because we're talking about all our ancestors, not just one our genealogical roots. So the idea here is not that David is rooted in Jesus, but Jesus is rooted in David, that the root of David is Jesus of Nazareth's ancestral origins, his roots in David. Jesus is from the tribe of Judah and the house of David. That is, he's from the root of David his ancestral forefather David, in whom he is rooted genealogically. Pretty easy stuff, really. This Trinitarian claim is really quite inane when you get down to it. There is only one God, the God of our Lord, and there is no God but his God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.